Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Game Maker Studio, specifically Game Maker 2 version 2.30. And that might sound kind of insignificant, but this is actually a huge upgrade that was just released yesterday. And to be honest, I don't use Game Maker that much. I picked it up a couple of years back when Game Maker 2 was first released to do a closer look series on it, and I haven't really touched it since. So I might be a little awkward in this conversation. But what you see in front of you, this is Game Maker. Again, I don't have a ton of hands on experience, so I can't do a lot of before and after. So if you are a Game Maker vet, this news might be a little cringe to you. But if you are new to Game Maker, well, this is it. Uh, it's, it's actually. Uh, kind of come a long way in terms of looks. And, and one of the features in this particular release, the 2.3.0 release, is we've got a couple of changes. Specifically, we now have this new asset browser. It's a nice way to work with things. On top of that, you can go into any particular asset and you can now tag them. Uh, so if you've got an asset here, you can now uh, provide tags on top of them. You can also color code your assets. So for some reason, uh, you want these to be chartreuse or pink or that actually came out as brown uh, you can do so on top of that we've also got some changes you can now order your rooms together in the room editor uh, let me see if i can actually get the room editor up there we go. So now you can actually set the room order, something that you could not do previously. And we've got a new editor in here in the form of the sequence editor. So you come in here, by the way, you can you can um, create all of your assets in this one centralized place. You can basically go ahead and create new things right up here. The new one again being sequences. Uh, I'm not going to actually create one, but as you can see, this is a timeline style editor. You can use this for doing cutscenes and um, multiple scripted objects together can be uh, brought together and composed over a timeline here. So this is new functionality here. There is also new functionality in the form of the uh, animation curve tool available here. Uh, again, I, I am a relative uh, Game Maker Studio Neophyte. So this is the stuff that I know is new in this particular editor. On top of that, they did a reorganization of their manual. Uh, so it is cleaner, nicer to look at, and so on. This is actually fully online. So even if you don't want to grab this yourself, oh, actually, no, it's, it's local indexed. Never mind. I'll take that back. Uh, but you can grab a 30-day trial of Game Maker Studio for Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac. So uh, regardless of what platform you're on, you should be able to check out Game Maker if you wish. If you like it, Game Maker is a commercial product. It starts at $99. It's often on sale for about 30% off. So expect to pay, you know, 70 to 75 bucks for the base version. And then you've got to start paying for various different platforms on top of that. So anyways, we just looked at kind of the, the IDE level changes that are here so far. So again, the, the new asset browser, um, the ability to uh, tag and color things together, uh, the, the consolidated asset creation there definitely made things nicer. The room manager now has, God, my voice isn't working. The ability to specify room order, as you saw right there, you can tag assets, uh, the animation curve editor is in there, and then the sequence editor is in there, the new top level resource that basically is for doing dynamic animations over time. Uh, definitely a cool tool and something that I think existing game uh, creators will definitely love. I will link to the full release notes, so if you want to check out a little bit more details about all of these things, they are there. But truth of the matter is, those are all really nice and, um, the new ins oh, I didn't show you the inspector either. Uh, so they have ins some inspector changes as well. Uh, and then, like I said, the manual was updated. But the real bulk of the 2.30 release wasn't actually on the editor side of things. It was on the runtime side of things. And these are some really fundamental um, things to the way that GMS or the, the, the built-in scripting language works. Uh, the first one is... Um, arrays uh, only permitted one and 2d arrays before so you could do like that style now it's taking more of the c approach where you can basically start chaining arrays together this allows you to create n dimensional arrays like you can see here zero 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 equals one is a four dimensional array so you can basically go in there now arrays are kind of a lot more flexible in their approach now you can have multiple uh dimensions to your arrays now and, and a slightly less clunky approach to them uh they've also got chained assessors in here this is nice in the form of if you want to assess into a data type's value inside of another data type inside of another data type you can now do so with this uh we've got new function uh support here in the form of inline functions and script functions. Previously, a script was a single resource that was created at a global scope and used to create a single custom function, which would then be called using the script's name as the function name. This is no longer the case. And scripts, while still global in scope, are now a type of container for one or more functions. This means that uh, when you compile your project, scripts are no longer called individually, but are actually um, 
at all run at the start of the game in the global scope. So all variables that are defined in the script outside of the function definitions will be considered global. The reason for this change is that can now contain multiple functions, which can now be used as methods. If you've only used GameMaker to code projects and the idea of functions may be something new to you. But for pretty much, I think 99% of the channel, you'd be thinking going, wow, they just added function support. But that is really going to change the way a lot of people work. So it's definitely a nice move forward in that regard. So the, the new function support is definitely going to change the way people work with it. And to another one, if you're from another programming language or platform and you're gonna look here and go, wait a minute, structs are a new feature? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, structs are a new feature. And again, structs are very fundamental to um, almost every game language or every programming language out there. A struct is basically a way of organizing like data so you can access it through named assessors. Uh, so you think like here, you've got my struct, which will contain dot A or dot B. Now you may be wondering, okay, what's the difference between a struct and uh, a class in a traditional sense, generally a class, well, it really comes down to your language. In some cases, it's just defaulting to private or not. But what you're seeing here is a struct is pure data. So you don't have functions inside a struct, it's just one of those things to be aware of what you can now organize your data a lot nicer in the 2.30 release. And I imagine this one is going to be a pretty huge game changer for a lot of people uh, that have been working with GMS, especially if you came into GMS from another programming language and you're like, oh, wait a minute, you don't have functions, you don't have structs, what, how, how do I, well, now all of a sudden that learning curve is going to be gone. And 2.30 also has the ability to control to a much greater degree uh, how errors are handled when they're encountered in your code, as well as the ability to generate your own error messages. We have a new throw operator. As the name implies, can be used to throw a runtime error message. If you've done exception handling in any other programming language, once again, you can be sitting there going, oh, okay, it didn't have that? Okay, well now it does. So it looks like GMS really kind of I don't know if it's fair to say put on its big boy pants. Because if you're looking at this as a C++ programmer, you're seeing all kinds of things here that, that you've been looking at or using for years. And can you imagine how frustrating your life would be without exception handling? without uh, structures or local functions or so on. So to the people that have been using GMS for all these years, your world just got a lot nicer to work with as you've got also with the n-dimensional arrays. Now again, I haven't used GMS in years. So if you are a Game Maker Studio programmer, let me know what you think of these changes down below. Are there any negatives? Because this really looks like fundamental stuff that should have probably been there all along, if we're honest, but it is definitely nice to see. So couple that with the improvements that have happened inside of the IDE itself, it has gotten cleaner and nicer. The move from Game Maker 1 to 2 was huge. Uh, but some of these improvements and refinements and, and the, the consolidated asset browser is definitely a nice approach. I'm assuming people are definitely going to like the new sequence editor, uh, making life easier in that regard. Uh, but there's there's quite a bit here. So I'm curious to hear what you guys, uh, especially if you are an established Game Maker programmer, what you think of this. And if you are not currently a Game Maker user, does any of this stuff kind of tempt you to move in? Or are you already, you know, happy with Unity or Godot or the various different competitors that are out there. And that's one of the challenges GameMaker has these days is it is a commercial game engine with an upfront cost. As you can see, here it is up on Steam, uh, and you're looking at $100 to start, but then we go from there. If you want to have a web platform, you're looking at, again, you're seeing all Canadian pricing, so it's probably, what, 140 US, 130? And then if you want Universal Windows Platform, or if you want mobile, mobile, you're looking at $226 Canadian, so that's at least 150 or $160 US. So then when you start adding all these things together, well, you'll probably be at the bundle land, and here you can see, even at the current sale price of 12% off, you're looking at 442 Canadian or probably 350 US for this package. So that is kind of a hard sell. But at the same time, there are a ton of shipped games using Game Maker Studio, so it is a viable engine for sure. Let me know what you think of it, Game Maker Studio in general, in the comments down below, and these changes in 2.30 specifically, and I will talk to you all later.